Today, another version of Descript with some new features, and I'm gonna show you how they can help you and how they can make you a better editor. Right off the bat, the first one we have is automatic multicam templates. Multicam, automatic multicam, if you haven't used it, is something where if you have multiple microphones and multiple cameras, so an interview podcast, then it'll automatically switch the camera view between speakers based on who's currently speaking along with cutaways, where it'll cut to a view of both speakers or all speakers, however many you have. What they've just added is the ability to put those automatically into templates. And this is huge. This is going to save so much time. Until now, all you could do was do a copy layout where you, it's basically a template within a project. You copy a layout from a scene and then paste a layout. Now you can put those all into templates and it's super easy. So I have here an example of a Squadcast call. To apply this, come up to the top right to Underlord, come down to where it says Automatic Multicam, and you'll see here that there is this new section that says Use Template. And if you have it on, you'll be able to apply a template. You can also just toggle it off and not use a template. Um, but they have a default one here, and inside of here are six different templates. So these are different views that would get applied. So there's, and you can see what they look like. So there's a side-by-side -side view. There's, if you have three speakers, there's a side-by-side-by-side -by -side -by -side view. And there's one called focus two camera where one speaker is really big and one small in the corner. But anyways, you get the idea. And you can make your own now and you could select change template and then choose your own pack of templates in order to have your presets all done for an interview. And then you'll hit submit and Underlord is working. It only took a couple of seconds. And there we go. So there I have my side-by-side -side view. There are, in the next scene, it's just the active speaker, side-by-side, -side, active speaker B, and so on. So pretty awesome capability that's gonna save a lot of time. The next thing that is new this week, and it hasn't come out yet, or at least not for me, I haven't gotten the invite yet, but the Rooms beta is now available. So if you go to descript.com slash rooms, you can sign up to be on the wait list for rooms beta, which is essentially they're doing away with Squadcast, at least as a name. And then there's this, gonna be this new thing called Descript Rooms. It's gonna be built straight into Descript. So you can start your remote recording calls inside of the app. And it's just supposed to be a lot more reliable, a lot more intuitive and Hopefully it'll have more features like being able to live stream and do a little bit more than what we could do with Squadcast. The third thing that's new, and I actually don't have this yet, but it's called the scene toolbar. So this is their change log. And here's what I'm supposed to see is underneath the canvas, when you're not actively labeling something, there's gonna be this new little bar that says layout, background, and transitions so that you can easily apply those things or modify those things without going into the properties bar on the right side. And like I said, it's not showing up on my project yet, but basically when you're, when you're in an editor and you're not selecting a scene like I am right now, or you don't have a layer selected inside of a scene, then that bar should appear. So for some reason, I don't have it yet. And sometimes Descript does this. They put things in the change log that aren't actually available yet. I don't know why, but this seems to be one of them. The next thing is editing in the timeline. For example, if I make a cut somewhere, so let me just cut out a word, and then I have these, these vertical grade lines that a lot of people ask me, what are those? That just indicates that a cut has been made there. And when you hover over it, you can regenerate it, apply the regeneration. Or if I have my timeline closed as I do right now, this is what just got added, is that button right there. So if I click on it, it'll pop up the timeline. It's just just a little quality of life thing that makes it a little bit easier to get to the timeline than going down to the bottom left every single time. And the next thing is a UI update. And that is that before we had in the bottom right, music and media as separate buttons. Now it's consolidated into this one that's just called stock. So if you click on it, you have a tab that says visuals and that's your videos, Giphy GIFs, images. And then you have one that's audio and that's your music and your sound effects. So it's all just now inside of the button stock. The last one is timeline exports on the web. This is the capability to export your project 
into another software like DaVinci Resolve or Premiere or Final Cut. Before, you couldn't do that on the web. You could only do that through the desktop app, but now you can do it on the web. So another step towards the web being completely on par with the desktop app.